Hello and welcome to another video on my tutorial channel. So right now I am working on uh, two things as a tutor in my professional life. I'm working on front end development, like, you know, the basics, HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, React.js, uh, Bootstrap, and, and, you know, a little bit of Next.js and, you know, similar things. And at the same time, I am also, I also do a lot of tutoring on C Sharp and .NET, building web APIs, you know, backend services, authentication servers. Um, and also, you know, some Razor MVC projects and things like that. So, so, and again, as I mentioned in the other video, so it's always been my idea um, to, you know, put some of my knowledge on my YouTube channel. And I, I wanted to do this last year. I couldn't do it. And then a lot of other things happened in the last few months. And finally, now, I think I have some time now. So, I, I've, I'm, so whenever I have some time, I sit down. I've started recording some videos and stuff like that. I got all the recordings set up and everything. So, so finally... Uh, as of now, yes. So that is what I'm doing. So there you go. So that's what welcome to C Sharp Basics. And today, um, you know, as always, uh, please go ahead and follow me on GitHub, visit my website, send me an email with questions if you have. And so today is a very simple step. Today is today's a very simple step. Now this is video number one. So so the very first step is of course you have to go ahead and install Visual Studio uh, Community Edition 2022. That is the current version at the time of making this video. Now, I do want to mention that, um, you know, as of now, like for the last six years or so, it is possible for you to run .NET on Mac and Linux as well. A lot of times, you know, some of my clients, they would be using a Mac, in which case I will turn on my Mac computer and then I will teach, you know, .NET and C Sharp using, on a Mac, using VS Code. Uh, however, you know, in, for the purpose of this series of videos, I will be using Visual Studio on Windows. Every now and then, you know, out of curiosity, as a, as a bonus or something, I might put out a video where I am using VS Code. You know, I could be working with a client on Mac on that day and I, I record a video on, on, the, on the Mac or something. Then sure, I will do some .NET, some C Sharp on VS Code as well. However, most of the time I will be using Visual Studio um, on Windows. And yeah, it is possible that you're thinking, I mean, how hard could it be, you know, installing Visual Studio on, on a machine? And, you know, it is actually pretty easy, as you'll see in a few minutes. At the same time, uh, you know, am I, you know, for the last 12 years, I have mostly taught coding to first time developers, you know, they could be students who just finished high school and are beginning university studies, or they could be adults who are working in a non IT uh, development, and they may have signed themselves up for a bootcamp, or they're part of some kind of a adult learning program or something like that, in which case, they are actually very new to coding. And in fact, they may even be new to using computers. More often than not, I find myself not, to, you know, I, I even give advice to, you know, my clients on, on what kind of computer to buy, what kind of how to set up their desk, what kind of monitor to buy and stuff like that. And, and naturally, the first few sessions, one of the sessions is usually on how to go about installing all the necessary software. And I even get paid a decent amount of money to show people how to install software. I mean, for you and me, you know, especially for people who already are in that developer zone, yes, you know, installing software should be straightforward. But there are a lot of people out there who are not able to do this. So, so there you go. Now, on my machine, then, I already have Visual Studio. So if I search for Visual Studio, you see that it's already there. So... I need to first go ahead and remove Visual Studio. So that is what I'm going to do. So let's do that. So I'm going to say control panel. And it, it could be part of the recording as well. You know how to remove software. I mean, if you're going to add software, you might as well know how to remove software. So that could be part of the training. So I'm going to go here, Visual Studio. Uh, there it is, Visual Studio Community. And I'm going to say uninstall. This should bring up the Visual Studio installer. So we will we'll see that. Right, there we go. I'm going to say click OK and it'll take a few seconds. We'll wait for it. As a developer, make, waiting for things to finish is a useful skill. Yeah. So much time is spent waiting for things to finish. Not just in coding, in real life as well.
Ah, okay, it is done. Uh, now, what I'll do is I'll also remove this Visual Studio installer as well, okay? So it's actually two things. So let's go ahead and come back here and I want to go Microsoft Visual Studio install. So two things we have to install when you're trying to get your computer set up for .NET development. So I'm going to install this as well. You know, I want to be thorough, even if it, you know, it takes a bit of time and slow. You know. If you're going to do this, we might as well do it properly. I think it's Ah, it's gone. There we go. Right? So it's definitely gone there. It, I can't see it anymore. Visual Studio is not there on the machine anymore. So let's go to my browser. I use Internet Explorer, you know, Internet Edge browser. I hope that's okay. So let's go ahead and search for Visual Studio. Now, please understand Visual Studio and VS Code are two separate things. Uh, I usually go with the color, you know, the purple one is the Visual Studio, the one which I use on Windows for .NET development and VS Code is the blue one, which also is I use on a daily basis, not only for web development and stuff like that, but also for .NET development. But today the video is about the purple one. So I need the community edition. That's the free one. The other two ones are, you know, you have to pay money and stuff like that. So let's go with the free download. Okay, and there it is. That's the installer. So we're going to click on open and the installer is there it is. Ah, there it is. Just click on continue. So first step, the installer will get ready. And then from the installer, we will install the actual Visual Studio. So two steps. And this step can take a while depending on how speed your internet is and how fast your computer is. So both of those things make a difference when you're doing a development thing. Like for my coding development, I have, I use a gaming PC. In my opinion, gaming PCs, they are slightly on the expensive side, especially in India. You know, gaming uh, things, they cost a lot of money, but still, in my experience, gaming PCs uh, make for a ideal developer machine because you know you're running so especially me i i not only i do i code um, sometimes i work on really big projects i have two sometimes three monitors plugged in um okay so hold on I, I, and i can tell my story later so here there are so many things in visual studio you can do a lot with visual studio you can do linux development with c plus plus you can do data science development you can do game development you can do all kind of things but we are interested in the ASP.NET web development. Okay, because you know, I, I just uploaded another video. Let me just show that to you. Hold on. So I, I just uploaded that like, uh, you know, some time ago. So what I did was hold on, let me just show you. Where did that go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so for example, this is the project. So this is the project I'm talking about, coupon project. Okay, this video is also there on my channel, so just check it out. This is the one. Uh, this is what we'll be building at the end of our training. So I will actually be building it. Look, some, oh, there it is. Yeah, let me just make this full screen so you get an idea. So so there you go. This is what we'll be building. I know my plan is this is going to be uh, the first capstone project. So at the end of this long series of C sharp videos, my plan is to teach you how to build something like this. You know, it has like a, a coupon API and authentication API, and then of course a web app. So that is what you're going to build. The video is already there, the code is already there. So everything is already there. So my plan is to slowly build up topics, you know, one by one, one by one. I don't know how long it'll take. <laughs> and, and of course, tomorrow things might change. And once again, I may not be able to make videos, but as of now, I'm able to make videos, but eventually my plan is to make all the videos it could be 10 videos 20 30 i don't know but ultimately at the end of the day you should be able to build something like this so that is really my plan so so there you go so for this capstone project the video that i i'll put the link on the you know on the description as well you know of course yeah yeah let me just uh let me just copy that here uh, yeah i'm gonna go ahead and uh, okay so i'm gonna put this link the capstone project link in the um, description so to build that all you need right now 
is the ASP.NET and web development package. That's about it. And then all the things are already installed. And here, what I would like to do is I like to, there's a button here which says install while downloading. For some reason, I don't trust that button. I don't have a rational explanation for it. It's just a, a gut feeling. I mean, coding is a very logical and rational activity, but there are some things which is like a gut feeling, you know? So I, I always use the option which says download all and then install. Somehow I feel more confident with that option i just don't like the first option i don't know why um so i'm gonna say download also it's like it needs about eight gpo space on your computer so again you know i hopefully you have a good computer and it has that much space so let's click on install and again as i mentioned uh depending on your internet speed and your the, how powerful your computer is this will take a few seconds or minutes or sometimes hours uh, you know if you're on a slow internet or something so you might as well like for me luckily my internet is fast enough so there you go it, will, it should happen while i'm talking but yeah as i was saying so if you're doing coding and things like that I, it is good if you have the the most powerful computer that you can purchase so, so there's no limit on how powerful your computer can be if you have a good budget then go buy a very expensive computer if you're not a tight budget then buy any basic Windows laptop like a Dell or a Lenovo or a HP laptop and you'll still be able to code. But in general though, you know, ideally, yeah, I, I'm going to come back and fall back to the option where you have a, a gaming PC with a GPU uh, that can run most games. I, I Mine has a RTX 3060. Uh, I have two gaming PCs, you know. I'm one of those uh, backup uh, guy so I, I like to have two um, uh, PCs uh, you know in case if this goes for repairs or something like that because you know like when you're working with clients I work as a freelancer I work from home so when you make a promise to a client that you deliver something you you know you should deliver right you you have a, a reputation and you should try to protect that reputation to the maximum extent possible so so yeah uh, so yeah, try to get a gaming PC, try to get two or three monitors if you can, high speed internet, um, good keyboard, good mouse. Again, gaming keyboard and gaming mouse, very good for, very useful for coding. Um, so yeah, uh, so the download is almost done, but after downloading, don't forget, it will have to do installation. So I'm going to uncheck this button which says start after installation. There is some backward background noise going on. There is a festival going on um, um, in in India here, and uh, but luckily I found I know I use OBS for recording the the videos, and there is a, a plugin like a extension. What it does is it kind of removes all audio frequencies which are outside the speaking range so like right now there is like a they are they are beating drums and um and stuff like that uh, because of the festival uh, you know, because of the festival so you know these you know, festivals are important and, and things like that um but i can see here in the obs even though that that la that drum sound is loud the microphone isn't picking up because of the noise cancellation setting that extension I, i'm really it's amazing what technology can do for you really i was i was really worried the other day because you know i was like hey you know what i finally i'm able to sit down and make some videos and uh, after a long time and i was really excited and then the festival started and there were all these drums and i was like hey what if the drums show up in the recording and what if it shows up when i'm talking to the customer or something and you know i, I work from home i don't have an office or anything but luckily, I found this extension. It's really, really nice. It's amazing what technology can do for you these days. Although technology was always there, and I am only now discovering it. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Like, they're, 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 they're doing the drum thing almost right next to my place, and the microphone isn't picking it up amazing just it's fantastic okay it's installing now there you go uh, once again you know downloading is done that depends on your internet speed now installation depends on how fast your computer is so both of them make a difference when you're coding speed of your internet and the the how good your computer is
Almost there, 75%. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. All right, it's almost done and it is ready. Okay, very nice. Oh, hold on. I need to check this. And it is done. Very nice, very nice. So let's go ahead and close this uh, Visual Studio installer. Hit the Windows key and then Visual Studio 2022. There it is. I like it, you know. I've been I've been looking at this Visual Studio purple logo for twenty years now. Wow. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> Time flies. Time flies. Doesn't stop for anybody, you know. Time just flies. Hey, why is it uh, I, I, uh, black color? I, maybe I can change that. So let's go ahead and click on. Oh, there it is. Uh, uh, there you go. So I already had it installed, already working on you know some projects. So that's already listed there. So you'll get this welcome window. So now that part is done. Installing Visual Studio Community Edition 2022 is done. So here I do want to make a note. Uh, you know, you want to make sure that you already have your uh, GitHub account. Okay, make sure you have your GitHub account ready. And along with the GitHub account, I hope you also have a, uh, a Microsoft account, right? Create a Microsoft account. So GitHub account and Microsoft account, both are necessary, uh, not mandatory, but if you have it, you, you know, you can sign in in Visual Studio and really helps you. And tomorrow, if you decide to do some Azure work and other things, you will need a Microsoft account anyway. So make sure you get that. So coming back. So this step is done. Let's move on to uh, doing the hello world stuff, right? So let's go ahead here, uh, Visual Studio. So I'm going to say create a new project, right? And there are a lot of project templates here. Now here, the main thing is you have so much here, you know, it's easy to get lost. So what we'll do is there are three drop downs. Let's use that. So go here and I say C sharp and I'm on Windows. So I'm going to select Windows. But as I told you now, especially for the last five years plus, it is possible to develop on Linux and Mac as well, which is really, really good, by the way. Um, and select Windows. Now I'm already on Windows, so I'm going to select Windows. And here are, there are again many, many different types of projects you can work on. Like I am interested in web API. I'm interested in web program, web development. Uh, you know, and, and unit MS test, you know, for testing projects and everything. Uh, but right now, I only want to do console. That's the hello world. So there you go. I'm going to select console. Now you'll get two options here. Let's try to understand what this is. Now the console app in the bottom, it says console app .NET framework. Now, but you might be thinking, hey, I thought we are already using .NET. I mean, C sharp is .NET and they both work together. So this is the old .NET. Okay, so you have to understand there are in fact two main types of .NET right now. So there is the .NET Classic uh, from before 2015, right? Which was Windows only. You know that is why before 2015, uh, if you thought about .NET development, you thought about C# -sharp development, it was almost exclusively on Windows. I mean, there were ways to run. You know, .NET development on a Mac and Linux, and it's not like it was impossible, but you know, officially, Windows was the only way you could do .NET development before, say, 2014 and stuff like that. But then, you know, Microsoft decided to make .NET and C# -sharp, all these things cross-platform. Right? That is why the current version, you know, right now we are on .NET 8. Uh, you know, let me just show that to you. So if you go here and you say uh, .NET. Oh, sorry. Let's try that again. So if you say, oh, what's happening? Ah, yeah. 
I don't know some key. Oh, sorry, sorry. So I press something. Oh, sorry. So if you say dot net LTS, right? Uh, so there you go. So if we go here, not this one. Um, yes, there you go. There you go. I, I'll put this link also in the video description. So you know what I'm talking about. So if you look here right now, there is dot net eight, which is officially supported till November 10, 2026. And then there's dot net six, the previous version, which is supported till November 12, 2024. But if you go here, you'll see that the very old version, um, uh, ah, there it is. This is what I said, the classic .NET framework. There you go. Look at this, look at this. Yeah, 2016, that's why I keep telling you, you know, five, six years ago, that's when .NET Core, uh, now they just call it .NET, uh, was released, that was cross-platform. But this is the classic .NET framework, right? This is the older version from way back, right? This is the original .NET. Whereas right now we are using the .NET, which is cross-platform. So that is what we're talking about. So here, this is the classic old .NET, and this is the current cross-platform .NET. So for the purpose of our training, we will, of course, be using the .NET 8. You know, you saw here, that is the current supported version. So all my code, all my videos, all my example code, everything I share with you is going to be .NET 8 because it is going to be supported till November 10, 2026. And it is right now, it is September 2024. So it's going to be around for a while. So there you go. But this is the classic .NET. So if so, when you look at Visual Studio and you're thinking, hey, which one should we use? Obviously, we are going to use the current version because that is what we want to do, right? So let's select the sun. Don't do, I mean, you can, well, of course you can run it, you can open it, you know, it's, it's Windows, it's .NET, it'll still work, but we must use the current version. So there you go. So let's go ahead and select that cross-platform current .NET 8 version. Uh, you can see here, okay, let's give it a name. So I'm gonna say, hello world, right? Uh, location, it can be anything you want right now. I'm just gonna put it on desktop. Okay, I won't be keeping this, you know, just to, there you go. Let me just create a folder call to uh, delete September 9, uh, .NET video tutorial recording. And I'll go inside this folder and it's called Hello World. Uh, other things you can leave it. I click on next. There you go, .NET 8. That's the version which is supported. So we'll do that. We'll other options, we'll ignore that for now. And then I'll say create. Ah, okay. Uh, so here, let's go around a little bit. You know, what are the normal things that you'll see? So on the right side here, this is the solution explorer. That is where you'll see all your projects. You know, you'll have multiple projects, multiple files. All those things are here in Solution Explorer. And then also you will see, uh, you can find out the version of your Visual Studio, you know, what version you're using and things like that. You can also sign into your account. If I go here, it says, oh, it's asking me to re-enter my credentials. So let me just do that. You know, let me just Okay, it's asking me to authenticate, so I'm going to do that. Okay. Oh, my face is blocking the, yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, so that's the Solution Explorer on the top right corner. This is what I just did, I just signed in, I hadn't signed in. For some reason it had expired. So let's take care of that. It's still loading, it's still doing something. We'll, you know, let it, oh, there you go, it's done. Uh, yeah, there you go. You can see the this is the Microsoft account that seems to be fine. Uh, GitHub also is asking me, so let's go ahead and click on that. There is continue. Okay, and let's see. Okay, these are all developer things that you have to do. You know, I mean, you may be thinking, why should you do all these things on the first day, on the very first video? But it, it's good. It's good to have these things configured now so that tomorrow they don't create any unnecessary problems for you.
Ah, there you go. I'm signed in on a Microsoft account. I'm signed in on the GitHub as well. So everything looks great. So that's the part. Let me bring my, my face here. So there you go. That was all. So that's the solution explorer. Let me show it again. So on the, on the right side is your solution explorer. Make sure you're signed in, right? So make sure you're signed in. Uh, and then uh, obviously I don't use too many extensions. I don't care about that. Uh, I do, you have the option called build. So you do go there very, very often. So let's go to build and then I'm gonna say rebuild solution. That'll, you know, do the rebuilding of the project. That's nice. And then, you know, I do like to put some breakpoints. So let me just type some code here. So I'm gonna say uh, war some sentence is equal to I am recording a C sharp visual studio tutorial. Okay, then I'm going to say console dot right line some sentence and there you go. I think there's some AI turned on so it's trying to help me so which is great. And I can put a breakpoint here if you want. I can remove a breakpoint. Just click on the left border and a breakpoint gets activated or removed, which is great. And I'm going to say build, rebuild. So that is done. And then there's a nice green button here. I can do that. Uh, I can just say run and a black window will show up. And there it is. It says, hello world. I am recording a C Sharp Visual Studio tutorial. That's all there is to it. And then when you're done looking at the output, you can close it. Now, if you want to put a breakpoint, then see what happens. So put a breakpoint here. That's very useful for debugging. And I'll put another breakpoint here. So two breakpoints, and then I'm going to run it again. Now, now what happens because of the breakpoint, the code will stop wherever you put a breakpoint. And then you can see, like input, you can put your cursor right now. Some sentence is null. So if I click on continue, and then if I look at this, oh, there you go. It's Now it has a value. It has a value, and you can click on it. You can look at variables. Very useful when you're developing to look at these breakpoints and debug values and things like that. You can also see in the bottom the values and stuff like that, the call stack on the right side. A lot of things are happening you know, all the time. So you just have to get familiar with all the places here. You can also see some diagnostic tools and stuff like that. I don't use it that much. I mostly focus on beginner development. But if you're working on enterprise project and things like that, it may matter to you like the memory usage, the CPU usage and stuff like that. So there you go. So again, I'm going to click on continue. And now we are back to the output, which is hello world. I am recording a C Sharp Visual Studio tutorial. And that's how you create a hello world project. So after this is done, just go ahead, click on file. And you can say close solution. We are back to the welcome window. And then you close this as well. And Visual Studio also, please go ahead and close it. And we are back to our PowerPoint. So that is how, the, there you go. This is what I wanted to do in this video. So again, very, 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 very beginner step. If you already know how to do it, I'm happy for you. But I also know from experience, so many people don't know how to do this. So there you go. So first step was installing the Visual Studio. I already had it on my computer. I got rid of it and then I installed it again. And then you know, I waited for it to finish, even though it, it made the whole video longer, it's fine. You know, and then of course, second thing is I showed you how to create a simple console um, Hello World project and also spend some time talking about the .NET versions and stuff like that. So there you go. That is all there is to it here. And I'll see you again in the next video. Oh, I, I forgot to turn on my face. Oh, sorry. Uh, there you go. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's it. So I'll see you in the next video.